This isn't my mug, but I washed my mug and couldn't be bothered drying it. So, dirtied another one that I've now got to wash. It's a little Miss Sunshine mug because, you know, we ain't about them gender norms here. And it's 25 past five on Saturday evening. Usually, I'd be at home by now. But we are attending an anniversary do for the volunteers. It's their 50th wedding anniversary and I got an invite. I also have a new haircut. Um, one volunteer thought that I was trying to copy someone off the television going trendy. And I thought, well, that's nice that you think it's trendy. Uh, but I also don't watch the television. Unless it's last of the summer wine or dinner lady, so I'll be getting an haircut that's at least 20 to 30 years old. It's 50 in some cases. Either way, haircut happened. I've checked with my manager that this will be okay to wear to the thing this evening because I couldn't be bothered going through the shelves and finding something else to wear. I was going to go and try and find something posh to wear, but that wouldn't be me, would it? I'm a commoner. And if they say that I can't go in, well... I'll just walk back down into town and wait for somebody to give me a lift home. <sighs> My manager did offer me a lift up to this do. Because it's at the golf club that she's part of. But don't know whether anyone else can agree or sympathise, empathise with this. I need some time just to get used to the idea of having to surround myself with people that I don't particularly know and where you've got to be in that kind of sociable environment being a rather unsociable person um so I'm kind of geeing myself up a bit also having been in work for well I've been here since half past eight I need some time a very quick amount of time just to get myself back together some time away from people actually you know I don't I, I'm not looking for hours here I'm not looking for just being locked away somewhere just getting the opportunity to read I don't want that just well it's going to be an, about an hour now and then I'll start walking up just an hour where I can calm down get over work for the day get it out my system and have a cup of tea in silence. I didn't want to go and stay at the manager's house um, and read my book there or I just wanted some time alone. So that's what I'm doing. Yesterday was my first day back in after I'd been off for um, Easter and it's been all right. It's been relatively quiet, really, which I don't know whether that's because the kids have gone back to school. I don't know whether it's because so many people are in a financial crisis, so they're actually not thinking of shopping at charity shops. Uh, or they're only coming here if they desperately want something. I don't know. Um, but it's quietened down somewhat. And I did spend four or five hours yesterday sorting out the books and refilling the shelves because that hadn't been done since I'd gone off as well. <sighs> but it's fine. Didn't see anything that I particularly wanted so we're okay. D didn't end up leaving here with books although I've still not bought the big bag of books that I've unhauled at home. <sighs> I am considering unhauling the CJ Sampson Dissolution series. Um, I started the first book in that series earlier this week and I wasn't a fan. To me it was quite reminiscent of how a writer is told to write crime fiction or was told at a certain point. It was a bit prescriptive, I don't think there's anything wrong with that but um, this felt but this didn't work for me for a number of reasons and this was just within the first 10 pages and I worried that I was going to take that with me through the entirety of the book. Um, it's set in Tudor, England and the 
protagonist seems to be, although he, although the protagonist is in Tudor England, he seems to have a lot of 21st century sensibilities and that immediately pulled me out of the narrative. And the way that he talked about stuff just didn't, to me, seem fitting to the time period. All the historical stuff was there and all of that felt incredibly realistic to the time, but the actual character himself. Editing Charlie here and I am determined to call this a cursed video. So that clip did cut out on Saturday and I believe that I had managed to record further videos to make it make sense. However, they have either not worked or my phone is saying there are three minutes worth of footage uh, but is only allowing 18 seconds to play. Therefore, I am here to try and cobble two videos together. On Sunday, I did record another wool gathering video, which was going to be about uh, the volunteers' golden anniversary. But what I will do is I will still just finish this about dissolution. So the character felt as though he was set in the time period that this is set, which is Tudor England. And my issue was that he was bringing 21st century sensibilities into the narrative. And I felt as though, on the one hand, that might be okay because readers are going to have these 21st century sensibilities themselves. And as it is in the first person, that is the reader's way into the world. However, it is also supposed to be Tudor England and when everything else was quite realistic of that time, um, regardless of this character. I felt as though I was going to end up reading this novel and finding more flaws and more things wrong with it. I've heard that the protagonist is actually quite arrogant and gets called out on it throughout the book, so you'll just have to let me know, should I keep the CJ Sampson Shard Lake series and give it a go, or do you think that it's going to end up not being for me? From there, I don't think I talked about much. I think I referenced the film Turning Red, which is the Disney film that I didn't end up enjoying. And I believe that I went on to discuss my writing of a poem called Coda, which begins with the line, the post office has a tail like an ichthyosaurus. And I'm currently working on this poem based on when I came across the word coda in Dino Sauri and the Italian lady who is speaking to me in Italian and helping me to learn the language told me that um, the coda is like a dog's cue uh, because in Italy they have the word coda means both cue as in a cue in the post office and means tail as in a dog's tail and I found this rather humorous and twisted it for my own poetic means. Well, this is a bit shorter than that was, but I will now hand over to Sunday's Charlie, who was giving us another wool gathering video. Originally, this was wool gathering 131 and 132, but maybe we'll just have to call it 131 for now. Um, I tell you, I will catch up with Brian of Bookish one of these days with his Saturday hodgepodge videos. Although I have to say, He's actually a lot more eloquent than I am, and he's talking about some rather important topics that Charlie doesn't seem to let into this very daydreamery head. Anyway, I might see you in a bit. I have a stray piece of hair right here that I can't get to return to its actual position, so this is how we're recording this video today. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I'm going to be talking about nothing in particular again. So last night I spoke to you just before I went off to a volunteer's 50th anniversary celebrations. Well, today I come to you, I don't know, feeling somewhat sprightly, which I perhaps shouldn't because this week I might end up with a bit of overtime and tomorrow I'm in work, but last night we did talk about also living in the present as well. 
Uh, one thing I didn't tell you about this week, I bought some books and there is going to be a haul video at some point in which these books are featured. Another thing that I don't think I mentioned yesterday is the fact that I had a conversation with Una Signora uh, Ieri and she said that my Italian is coming on very well. She hasn't yet asked for Dinosauri back, uh, Il Mitico Mondo Prehistorico, uh, ma penso che uh, dico uh, questo libro uh, perché è... it's enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, it's enjoyable to read and understand Italian, even if it is a book that is meant for the 12 to 15 year old. Otherwise, today I have plans to hopefully finish reading The Paper Palace by Blank Cowley Heller. Make some more headway in The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. Uh, Charlie and I have said that we will share our rankings with one another today and we've got a system to try and cobble together a shortlist. Um, so it's going to be a bit Eurovision in that our top book is going to be awarded 16 points all the way down to the bottom book that will be awarded one point and then we're going to add those scores together and come up with that shortlist as well as having our own personal books that we should believe should be on the shortlist. Uh, I have ranked them, but in my rankings I've also considered the fact that there are books that I would appreciate seeing on the shortlist that is coming this Wednesday that I might be in work for, so there's every chance that I will be scuttling off to have a mini break from work uh, whilst I'm there to see what's made it to the shortlist. But there are books that I haven't yet read that I'd like to see on the shortlist, and there are books that I have perhaps put lower in my rankings than the top six, but I would also like to see them there if that makes sense, I'm gonna sneeze, which means now I'll have to edit this video, which is a pain. So this party last night, I spoke to you about how I recognised that I actually wanted to bask in the quiet of this, and we know that I'm a socially awkward, socially anxious person anyway. It comes from uh, spending many years with severe agoraphobia, and um, I don't think that ever, like, goes away, uh, but I do think that you just can put yourself in social situations more and become more accustomed to things and so knowing that people you know are going to be there is going to make things a bit easier. And my manager had told me that it would take me about half an hour to get there. So I set off on this walk to the venue and I knew beforehand that the pavement disappears and then it's just having to walk along the main road. And when I got to this point I saw a sign that said there was a public footpath and I thought, hmm, well, the place I'm going might just have a public footpath. It seems like the type of place that would. So do you know what I did? I thought, well, I've got a few minutes yet. I'll walk up and I'll have a look. Well, walked up this public footpath, turned right. I'm at the flaming place that this party's taking place at. Well, I start wandering around trying to find the entry, find that. I have to walk across the grass, which makes me feel really bad because I'm like, am I supposed to keep up with the grass? There was a public footpath, but the public footpath disappeared. When you get to a certain class, a certain richness, when you have a certain amount of money, suddenly footpaths don't exist. Uh, so, got there. Oh, wow, you saw what I was wearing yesterday. People thought I was the doorman. It might have also been because I was stood outside waiting for somebody. I had no idea where I was going. I needed an adult. But I saw these people, they told me where to go, went, introduced myself, said hello to the volunteer whose party it was, and then said, I'll just go and wait outside for somebody I actually know. Not being mean to her. I just meant I wanted to get a table with the people that I knew, and I thought if I go and sit on my own and other people come to the table, I'm going to be sat with a load of people I don't know. So I went outside, found the people, waited till the person I know turned up, and then went back inside. I tell you... The experience last night is one that I could not believe. So they had an op buffet that was paid for by the husband and wife and vegetarians got lasagna. They did put a dessert on, but you know me, off sugar. You got your first drink free. They had this comedian magician person. They had a DJ 
and they had cake. I thought, I understand it. You know, you want you want people to come and join in the celebration of you having reached 50 years together. And it's great. I was mildly impressed. Anyway, there were a few technical difficulties with a video at one point. Um, that was entertaining. Comedian was entertaining. Company was good. Um, and then the DJ came on and the dance floor opened up. <sighs> and this was the moment I've been dreading because of a volunteer who's determined to make me dance. And I don't dance. I'm socially awkward, we know that. Never got anywhere dancing. Don't do it. So when I get onto any sort of dance floor, tend to just do movements that um, look as though I'm mocking dance. Um, and I am. Just started flailing about, really. And it was just me, my manager, and this volunteer. And the DJ decided to speak out on the way that I was manoeuvring my body across the floor. And, well, if only me volunteer, you know, me volunteer turned around and defended me then. You know, about the fact that at least I was one person who was out on the dance floor, unlike all the other people who still sat down, and maybe you should play music that got people on the dance floor. But, you know, you know, these things happen. We're northern. People don't mind having a go in the north. We're also rather kind, so it makes no sense. I suppose when you get more southerly, people have kind of lost touch with their emotions. I mean, quite frankly, I lost touch with my emotions years ago. I've been nothing but sarcastic since 1992. Um... But imagine that in some previous life, I was actually a bit empathetic and a bit kind. Um, but after a few bodies, you kind of lose that. It's like evolution, really. Goodbye emotions. Allo nepotism. Allo sarcasm. Allo tea. Oh, it would have been good if I'd said allo vera, but I ain't that type. The volunteer kept me on that dance floor until the end of the night, which was midnight. And I texted my mother and she came and she got me. And then I came on. I came home and I'd had a parcel delivered um, from Emily of Novel Novels, which is just my look by Adele Parks. And she's sending this to me because one of the families in this is the Heathcotes. Um, yeah, if you didn't check out my channel name, my surname is Heathcote, just in case. That's the pronunciation for me. Other people call themselves Heathcotes. Uh, Juliet Stevenson plays Catherine Heathcote in a adaptation of a Val McDermott novel and it haunts me her pronunciation of that uh, but we're Heathcotes um, we're not common in, we're not common enough we are common we're plenty common we're too common to pronounce it any other way someone has a lottery win and Lexi and Jake have played the same six numbers with their friends the Pearsons and Heathcotes this Lexi and Jake have a ticket that's worth 18 million but their friends are determined to get a share of it oh well yeah, you can tell that's not my branch of Heathcote's at all. We've never won any money, and quite honestly, if our friends did win the lottery, then um, it'd be funny because I don't have any. <sighs> so, yeah, just my look, Adele Park. So, I don't have any idea when I'll get to it. Um, it doesn't seem the type of thing I'd usually read, but I'll keep an open mind. And from the looks of the chapters and everything, I do think that my sister would quite enjoy this book, so dependent on what happens, we'll have a look. But thank you, Emily, for sending me that. And I promise, I do promise, that I know it was your birthday over a month ago now. I know time has passed. I know that technically we're closer to Christmas than we are to your last birthday. But I will get to your birthday present in the post, eventually. Um, so yeah, I also went and collected another parcel I ordered because Hotel Chocolat were having a sale and it's my mother's birthday coming up. Uh, that was this morning. So this morning, sister sent a message um, asking whether I wanted to go for a walk. And I did. So we went off to Mac Forest. And for the first time ever, we allowed Sally to go off lead. Now, I have had this conversation with um, AJ of AJ Done Reads and Rights. And about keeping Sally on the lead. And I much prefer to have Sally on the lead. But we wanted to see how she would react with our other dog. Well, my sister's dog, Floss. So we went to an enclosed area and allowed her off the lead um, just to run around, have a gamble, get this out of her system because um, she was having a bit of tantrum about um, not being on the lead because Floss doesn't walk on the lead 
but Floss also has a very good recall, is a Border Collie and tends to keep to my sister's side. Either way, she did well, then she went back on the lead, perfectly fine, had a play with a stick, all good. Came home, then my sister took me to get that parcel, and now we're here. And I just felt like making a video and enthusing about last night. It's not often I get invited to things. Uh, famously, a group of my friends decided to put on a birthday get-together for me many years ago and forgot to invite me. One birthday there was a film that I wanted to go and see and my sister went to see it with her friends and forgot that I'd wanted to see it. To pour salt in the wound, she actually went on the day of my birthday, so didn't even turn up to say hello. But I don't hold these things against people, you know. Uh, I don't much care to celebrate anyway. But it was somewhat of an enjoyable night. And I think that after everything that has gone on globally over the last few years, and indeed in terms of current events and everything, one night of frivolity... Um, and mindless entertainment was just particularly fun and a bit of a tonic really uh, which is not a si not something I ever thought I'd say about a social situation in which I was forced to communicate with people uh, whilst also upon that dance floor flailing about, flailing about making stupid movements with my arm and mocking the form of dance and the way that people move in terms of dance then I did think, you do look a bit awkward up here, but you're also in on the joke. And you also never have to see these people again. I mean, I don't tend, I don't ever plan on dancing. And um, should the situation ever arise again where people are on the dance floor, I will remain firmly attached to the table. And if anyone tries to get me to move, I will go and hide in a cloakroom. Uh, but last night, I didn't have the option. And I won't lie. I did have fun. Although my legs are particularly painful today, uh, but that's my own fault because I chose to mock the form of dance. Thank you for sticking around and watching this video because I don't think you expected two of these types of videos this week. Uh, I hope that you got something out of this video, even if it was sheer boredom. I mean, also we could talk about that. We could talk about the how you feel when you attend any sort of um, party or function. How do you cope with it? Because you will have seen yesterday, I was suffering somewhat from some anxiety about being in a social situation. But then when I got there and got over that and got over the nervousness, I did end up having fun. But how do you go about these sorts of things? Do you have any trepidation? Are you more of a sociable person? Are you less introverted than me? Because I won't lie, it did take four pints of bitter for me to actually acclimatise. But I also wasn't inebriated because I think that, um, I think that I danced it off. Ugh. Ugh. Seriously, I'm getting too old for this sort of stuff. I wasn't built to be fun and frivolous. I was built to be stoic, mean and sarcastic. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, but yeah, let's have a chat. I hope that you didn't, you weren't too bored here. Because until next time, that is all. So I know that in th that second portion of the video, let's call this a cursed video right now because trying to record these editorial bits whilst there's a drill in the background just makes me think this video was not meant to be. There's someone up there thinking, do you know what? World Gathering 131 is not it. When I went back and I was thinking about this video and I was talking about going to this golden wedding anniversary and how it was very nice after these years to get together and have fun and frivolity, I did recognise that I wasn't actually also acknowledging that I'm aware it's a privilege to be able to do this and there are actually quite a lot of people who are still shielding and are unable to do this and I wouldn't want um, anyone to think that I was being forgetful about them. It is one of those things where you are able to hold space in your mind for people who are suffering more than you are and also still able to acknowledge that you did have something of a fun and frivolous night and you aren't excluding these people from your thoughts. 
Uh, also, I mentioned about taking Sally off lead in an enclosed area of Macclesfield Forest on Sunday. And this is because, um, so my sister has her dog off the lead and when we're with the collies and they're rounding up sheep, they tend to be off lead as well. And Sally has been getting, having a few more tantrums on the lead recently and she's been getting quite fractious. So we tried her off the lead on Sunday, uh, only for about two or three minutes just to see how she would cope and she did well. I have just got back from a walk where I took Sally, I let her off the lead from the point where we walked on Saturday, on Sunday, walked up to the benches, which is our usual walk, and then back down to the car. She stuck by me. She was, she had fewer tantrums than she has been having on our walks. Came back to me when I put her on the lead as we were going past horses and I put her on the lead as we were going past other dogs. So. I think that it was a win. I'm not sure that it's something that I will do all of the time. I think if I go down the towpath, I'm still going to keep Sally on a lead uh, because the only places we come off there are by main roads or where there's cars, whereas when you're in the forest, there are, there are fewer cars. And either way, if she thought I was getting too far out of sight, she would run to me. Or if she realised that she'd gone too far of my sight, she'd turn around and come back to me. Although, to be fair, she didn't ever get out of my sight. I will admit I was probably more nervous than she was and I am glad that I have tested it and I've checked the you know I now know the dog's recall and um I know that I can perhaps trust her more than I thought I could but I never thought it was an issue of trusting the dog it was more trusting my ability to control that dog in front of other people either way it went well my nerves might have been a bit unfounded I don't know. I believe Sunday Charlie called an end to proceedings. Do I still need to? Uh, I have been informed this morning that my volunteer, not my volunteer, I've been informed this morning that my colleague still is testing positive for Covid, which, you know, is quite nice considering she's about to go on holiday. And so I will be in work tomorrow, which isn't what I wanted because they're announcing the Women's Prize shortlist at um, nine o'clock and I'd wanted to do a reaction and I'd wanted to discuss the shortlist that Charlie and I had put together. Um, we came up with four shortlists in total. I had mine, Charlie had hers, then we awarded all of the books in the long list points based on our favourites to our least favourites and we added those numbers together and we came up with our own comprehensive shortlist from those numbers and then we had a conversation and discussed what we actually believe will be in the shortlist tomorrow. And I was hopeful that I'd get to record this video, but maybe it'll be okay to do it on Thursday. Hopefully uh, that the, the hype uh, won't have died down in Charlie too much, as in this Charlie right here. And I won't decide that I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I sat down to, I meant to finish the Paper Palace on Sunday, sat down to read it and it's still not working. I can't get the iPad to work and this is what I'm reading the book on. So I don't know what's going on here. I'll have to figure something out. Hopefully it's an issue that's easily fixed. Otherwise I don't know what I'll do. Uh, but that's me. I have decided that I'm gonna, I want to read this pamphlet of dyslexia and other languages that I was given by Helen Kay when we last did an event earlier this month and actually make a start on mantelpieces by Hilary Mantel today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to drink coffee, uh, probably shave and I don't know. I don't know. It's reaching the point where it annoys me. Uh, but non o qualsiasi razoio. But abyssinia. If you like this somewhat chaotic, lackadaisical, all over the place video, then good for you. Um, it takes a lot and I wouldn't like to question your taste in this moment, uh, but just to let you know, there are probably people questioning your taste right now if you manage to sit through this entire video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I don't ask too much, I don't ask often, but if you've managed to get through this entire video, then really you'll be able to watch anything that I put out there into the universe. So subscribe, come join me, 
and make this northern husk of a human being mildly euphoric i don't know i'm off terra until next time that is all